Hello everybody and welcome to the first ever episode of The Comedian's Tea Party. Uh, thanks very much for coming, first and foremost. Thanks for coming to listen. I really hope you enjoyed the podcast. I have so far, I've only recorded a couple of episodes, but uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, so I really hope you have a lot of fun listening to it as well. So yeah, thanks very much for listening. Uh, if you do like it, please please uh, leave me positive reviews on sort of wherever you listen to it. Hopefully I'll have the podcast on sort of most of the apps. Um, tell your friends, you know, give it a share on, on social media, download it, um, tell everyone about it, you know, just, just spread it around if you can, if you, if you like it. Uh, that'd be lovely. That would really help me out. First guest was Carl Donnelly and uh, we just had a really, really fun chat. Uh, just largely nonsense, sort of roughly tea-based, more tea-based than I thought it was going to be, to be honest, uh, which is cool. O- o- like On that note, I should point out that, you know, we're still just getting started. So if you feel like there need to be any tweaks to the format, then please get in touch at teapartypod at gmail.com. And that is the letter T, partypod at gmail.com. Or, you know... Drop me, a, drop me a tweet or, a, or anything on Instagram. You can get at me on both of those at Tea Party Pod or me personally at Side Eves. Yeah, just sort of let me know if you're a comedian or you know anyone particularly interesting. You want to be on the podcast, then drop me an email or a tweet or sort of anything like that, and uh, we, we could talk about that. Or if you just have any suggestions for sort of tea companies or anything like that, or, or uh, biscuit companies or anything that you think uh, would like to send me some stuff to try out on the podcast, that would be great. Uh, I've got quite a few people sort of already involved, and I've got a lot, a lot of tea bags from uh, Twinings and Tea Pigs so far. Speaking of, we were drinking uh, Twinings tea on this episode, and we, we uh, you know, I'll mention on the episode uh, which ones we actually have, but uh, just to just to reiterate, uh, today we're trying the turmeric with orange and star anise, which is delicious, and the focus tea, uh, which is mango, pineapple and ginseng, which is mind-blowingly tasty. That is very, very nice indeed. And that is from Twining's uh, Super Blends range. They sent me, sent me uh, one of each of that range uh, to try out. And oh my word, it's very good. So yeah, we had Carl Dudley on the episode and we talk about uh, just lots of sort of various things like religion and wildlife and body language. And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's weird and funny. And there's a, a lovely moment in there where I have a complete breakdown and can't pronounce a very simple phrase. Uh, I was going to take it out. But my girlfriend told me that it would be funny if I left it in uh, because apparently people enjoy misery. So I hope you enjoy that and I hope you find it funny because <laughs> uh, it was an odd moment in my life as a fairly eloquent man. Generally, there will be swearing in the podcast. You know, it will come up. We're just, we're just adults. There's, there's bits of swearing just, to, just so you know. I, d- I did bleep out one swear word. Uh, and that is because I didn't expect to say it. it just it was, it was the severity of it caused me to bleep it out. It caught me off guard. Now, if you want to follow Carl on uh, on any of the social medias, then uh, uh, please do so at Carl Donnelly. That's just at Carl Donnelly on on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and he's very funny. Puts out a lot of great content. So uh, go and check him out. Go and listen to his podcast as well. Two vegan idiots. Very funny podcast that he does with Julie and Dean and sort of various guests. Um, great, great fun. Uh, now, I should point out that I do mention towards the end, I mentioned a preview that I'm doing next week um, of my Edinburgh show, Size Matters, and that is at the Bill Murray in Islington on the 26th of March at 5.30. The reason I bring it up now is I didn't say the actual date of when it was. So uh, if you hear this too late, uh, just ignore this. Uh, but if you hear it before that, please come along um because there are lots of tickets now the reason that i ha- am rushing this to bring it out now is so that you can hear that about the uh, about the preview and potentially come but i'm i'm rushing it out before the music is ready because uh, that's still being worked on and to be perfectly honest with you I- i'm reasonably certain it's going to be a masterpiece so when you come to listen to the music you'll realize why it's better to wait because it's going to be very very good now otherwise 
just enjoy the podcast. Cheers. Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of the Comedian's Tea Party with Cy Deeds, with myself, Cy Deeds, and uh, my first guest, uh, Carl Donnelly. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Tea fans. Yes. <laughs> I, is that what you're, uh, are you marketing this to? I think so, yeah. There's been there's been a, a surprising amount of interest from the tea community. And yeah. I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't realise there was a tea community until I started um, tweeting people and asking them to send me tea. And they just sent you tea? Yeah. They they asked for like a uh, like Twinings asked for a, which is a, we're, we're drinking Twinings tea today. Yes. I'm not doing an advert for them because they're not paying me, but they have sent me some free tea. They sent you, to, they used to show me the box. They sent you. Yeah, they've sent me 180 tea bags. That is it's a lot too of tea many. Bags. I'm not going to do that many podcasts. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm right, but by the time I get to them, uh, those tea bags will be off. Do so they go off? I don't know. I mean, we've got the box of turmeric uh, twinings here. That's twinings super blends. That's one of those questions that I should probably it know does. if I'm doing a tea podcast. They do actually have a best before end. It says uh, August 2020. Well, there you go. I've got, I've got a year and a half to drink 180 <laughs> tea bags. <laughs> Better get on it, mate. Yeah. Uh, what is it? We're having the turmeric with orange and star anise. Is that anise? Is that uh, it is star anise, yeah. yeah. I don't know what that is. It's... um. It's sort of got quite a licorice-y, uh, aniseed-y flavour. It's, it's a little, it looks like a little star. It looks like a bit of wood, but it's... Um, be, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's a picture of it there on the box. I think I've seen a picture of a cross-section of one. Right, but they put, what you do is, um, I don't actually know what they look like before they're picked or whatever, but I when you cook, when you make like a, do you know, uh, is it a fur? Is that how you say it? P-H-O. Uh, that dish, it's like oh. a sort of broth, a spicy broth. I always assumed broth. that was pho. No, I, I always did until somebody corrected me and told me it's fur. Oh. And uh, so that's when I, I've made those at home and I had to buy star anise. Oh, okay. So you buy a little bag of, it looks like sort of potpourri. Interesting. Potpourri, as you might <laughs> pot, call it. Pow, pot power. Yeah. Pot power. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to try this. Yes. No, it's been yeah, brewing. Are you a bag in or bag out? It, well, I don't know. I've never had this one. Oh, it's... Um, much more orangey than I expected. Mmm. That tastes kind of... Hang on. It's Christmas. It's, 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 it's Christmasy. It's Christmasy, yeah. I think. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think It that... is. It's sort of Christmas. It's like Christmas and ramen. Yeah. You have ramen in the flavour of yeah. Christmas. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good old-fashioned Christmas ramen. <laughs> yeah. Which is, uh, I think that's how they market it. It's a, on the box. Christmas it's nice, ramen. though. I like yeah. tea. I'm a big fan of a turmeric tea. Oh, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of people aren't you know, aren't up to speed yet with the new wave of turmeric teas. Yes. I mean, to be honest, I, I think you've, I'm a good first I'm, guest because I am genuinely a big... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not... I'm a big all-round tea drinker yeah. and coffee drinker, but, like, I don't... I'm not somebody who just goes for a classic breakfast tea. I You're love a, I love a crazy well, new I'm blend. Gonna, I'm glad you brought that up. That's going to be one of the questions that I was going to ask you later on. Uh, speaking of, I don't know where I put my book, full of questions, but... Uh, just, just full of questions. It. There's three. Just riff um, it. It's for three questions. Um, yeah, no, oh, that's yeah, that's cool because I've I've never really experimented that much with different teas. I've had some, uh, like I I got a sort of fond memory of um, I do uh, tour management and occasionally with uh, Asylums, the band. Yeah, and uh, they were playing at Glastonbury in twenty seventeen. Yeah, um, and they were playing on Billy Bragg stage. And Twinings had like they'd supplied a load of tea, and they had some like orange tea thing, and the, uh, I was hungover as anything, and drank it, and it was good. And I'm standing there thinking, this is this is sort of giving me life today. And then I turn around, and Billy Bragg's there, so I chat to him, and it's cool, it's a good day. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's, mm, I think it's uh, there's still a bit of not snobbery sounds the wrong word. It's that sort of assumption that if you drink funny teas. That it's sort of pretentious or something. Yeah. But I just I I had to I didn't have to, but when I went I went vegan years ago. Yes. So and actually I still personally don't think there's a good milk replacement that works with a breakfast. I was gonna ask that very thing because um I it's a long story, I had an eye surgery last year. Yeah. Um as a result of being on like tons and tons of different eye drops and I'm currently on a uh, an antibiotic which uh, I'm not allowed to consume dairy two hours oh, either side yeah. of it because it would just mess my stomach up. Yeah. Um, which I have had experience of. It's quite unpleasant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I've been, I've been trying to find out uh, because I love tea, like, I've been trying to find a milk replacement. And uh, There are, I mean, basically what you need to, you need, <laughs> this is stuff that I've, I mean, I've spent years 
trying to work this yeah. out, but it's um, you need as neutral a sort of milk as possible. And I, th- I think the only one I think even remotely works and doesn't split is oat milk. Okay. And that's about as sort of bland and, you know, and then you could, but it still doesn't, if you've grown up drinking tea with milk, yeah, it's not, it's a, not it same. still doesn't taste the same. Soy is okay, but it's a little bit creamy. Yeah, and it can split as well, some oh, soy okay. milk. So like I, what I did was when I gave up dairy, I just stopped drinking your old fashioned tea, you know yeah. what I mean? So I just, then I've started, then I got into coffee. Move on to this nonsense. And then, yeah, then after a while, I'd always been a little bit anti-herbal teas. I could handle like a green tea or something if I was Mm. somewhere, or a peppermint tea if I had a sore belly. Yeah. But then I just, I thought, do you know what, I'm going to start having a look around. I found, since then, I've properly, I've got so many different teas at home. And turmeric's, in the last two years, turmeric's become the one. Interesting. Good for your, um... Something. I think it's yeah. It's it's one of them things where you, I I'm always a bit dubious when people say it's a superfood. Yeah. Because I don't know what that means. No, I don't think it's really a thing. No, but I don't. Think, <laughs> yeah, no, apparently I think you're right. Actually, I think I read is a it thing, really. I read a thing saying that, that superfood is a fake um, description of yeah. Just it, it's it's not legally binding. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you've yeah. got it's not like you say this is a superfood and like the superfood. Like some of the words they make up for like shampoos. Yeah. I okay. think yeah, there's no like governing body of superfoods really? who will turn around and say this one isn't. Like I yeah, think yeah, yeah. I do think it's a it's bit not of like a, sort of a, a, a group of food has has been subjected to radiation. No, and they've developed. No, <laughs> it's not that. But uh, but I re- yeah, they reckon turmeric's very good for things like inflammation. Yes, it's an anti-inflammatory. Yeah, yeah. But again, if you've got just a bit of it in a tea bag, I don't know how much it's gonna deflate you. Like, yeah, like you're supposed to be having like a teaspoon of turmeric a day. What is turmeric? It is a root. It's like a ginger. It looks right. like ginger. I'm looking at the picture. I've actually box. got some over here. I'll, go, I'll show you. I'll show you one afterwards. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> what a treat. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So that was, that was one of the. I mean, you've ruined my questions for later. Um, Sorry. It's fine. Yeah. So there's so there's no good milk replacement. Well, there are there are, there are ones that you can manage. I think I I pers- I know some people have different opinions. I think oat milk is the only one. Yeah. If I wanted a good old fashioned milky tea, I'd have to go oat milk because I think it just doesn't really have a flavour. Yeah. So what it does is just makes the tea a bit sort of milkier, but doesn't change the taste of the tea. It's still just right. tea. Because that was going to be my, my sort of the, that's the next on my list was oat milk to try. Yeah. Um, and I, in my mind, it was going to make it sweeter. Well, you know, if you get an unsweetened, make sure you, that's the that's another thing you can make that mistake of getting a sweetened like soy milk yeah. or a sweetened almond milk. That's obviously it's going to make your tea taste like flipping marzipan or something. Yeah. So you don't you've got it. to be careful and watch your your sweeteners. Is a, there you go. I mean, that's quote number one for the yeah. podcast. Isn't it? There'll, be, there'll be a meme about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. Oat milk. There you go. Yes. Yeah. If, if anything, oat milk. Otherwise. I mean, yeah, because this 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 uh, stuff is the super blends range, which is brand uh, new. Yeah, out. I've not seen it. So I was about to yeah. say, I've not actually. Um, I, I didn't know they did a turmeric tea. No, well, I didn't know what tea they were going to send me. Yeah. Um, and then they just sent me a letter saying, like, oh yeah, here's here's a brand new super blends range. Hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I've then, already had a few sips and I'm enjoying it very much. It's so. quite nice. I really yeah. like it. I'm glad I'm leaving the bag in though. I do think sometimes it says on there, leave it in for three minutes and then yeah. take it out. And I personally disagree. Yeah. I like to leave the bag in and let it get a bit pungent down the bottom. Absolutely. Yeah. Let it get a bit, <laughs> let it get a bit disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> a bit later on. Before we get into the meat and potatoes down the yeah. bottom. There was, uh, yeah, cause my, my first uh, foray into um, sort of weird tea not weird teas but like um, I'd, I'd only ever had sort of English breakfast yeah uh, until I was at a party once and because I drive everywhere like I barely ever drink and um, everyone's everyone's on sort of various narcotics and yeah uh, I, I, I just wanted more tea and, uh, <laughs> and uh, they only had rice milk which I don't like no it's not great um, I actively dislike it yeah it's, it's got some applications but yeah, not a lot. Uh, and they said, "Oh, do you want a green tea?" And I was like, mm, "No, never had, never had weird teas yeah. before." And they were like, "Oh, try it." Oh, it it was quite delicious. So I love it. Yeah, green. I think green tea is one of the ones where I used to drink quite a lot of it, and I think I overdid it. But now I still have the odd one. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's it's a it's a you know, I can I can see what the Chinese are on about. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, yeah, that, it's, yeah, it's a that's, Chinese that's like, tea, is, it? is that where it comes from? There we Green go. tea? I think it's from China. I mean, it's an old tea from China. Uh, uh, essentially, doesn't it's it? A, well, yeah, I think that's where it started. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we did really run with it. The, yeah, the we've, sort of, we've claimed it as our own. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, that's quite a British thing to do. Isn't Absolutely, it? yeah. <laughs> There's, it's, uh, Stuart Goldsmith's got a bit, which I love, about, uh, about wearing... Um, like Native American headdresses, yeah, and someone saying like, "Oh, I think that's cultural pro- appropriation," and uh, he said, "Yeah, well, I'm English, and I think you'll find it's within my culture to steal your culture." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing, absolutely true. Yeah, uh, but then do you know, what? I, I read an article yesterday. I didn't. I, I read the headline, um, <laughs> which is very often the case. Um, but that was it was about how cultural appropriation is good. Uh, but it's cultural, cultural. Uh, I, can't, I can't pronounce the R's very well. Yeah. It's why I think you're a bold guess for my first choice because I can't say Carl very well. I can't say my own name. Can you not? Because I've got a South London accent. Yeah. So when I say my own name, I say Carl. Carl. Which yeah. Is, which that's actually, how I say. If, yeah. My mum, my, my parents, they pronounce it Carol because they're Irish. Yeah. So it's Carol. Hello, Carol. So to them, the R's easy. But I was raised in South London, so yeah. Yeah. I don't. Um, I'm, I struggle with a uh, with those sort of sounding words yeah. as well. See, I'm just from Essex, so I've got this. Oh, there you go. You'll have it. Kent people struggle with it as yeah. well. So it's just um, it's a curse. It's our cross to bear. I can't remember where that was. Uh, oh, it was, um, you read a thing about cultural proof. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, so it's it was cultural. Oh God, I've done it again. Cultural. I'll, I'll cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it here. Yeah. Uh, cultural misappropriation. Oh is, yeah, yeah. Is what yeah. we're. Well, that's what I've. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard some people say actually. You know, there's such a thing as cultural appreciation, isn't there? Mm. Where you essentially, you know, things like yoga, say, is a good example of ramen. something that was, yeah, rum. But you know, like things like the yoga was created in India and it's yeah. treated, but and it's it's sort of there's in the West we've sort of taken it and you know it's been sort of appropriated and taken on, but it, it was created to be used. It was created as a tool for people yeah, to yeah. use as like a meditation, as a way of, you know. So I, so obviously they wanted it to spread. I suppose it's when, you know, we, we start sort of creating wacky white people versions, isn't it? And that's yeah. when it gets a little bit into appropriation rather than just taking something and, and enjoying yeah. it for what it was and actually using it properly. There's sort of, there, there can be a fine line between yeah, appropriation so. and, uh, and homage. Yeah, whereas there's some people that go too far and almost, I've, 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 I have actually seen people have a go at sort of people for even, like, even being into yoga. Yeah. It's like, no, it's, I've, it's I've like religion, it isn't it? If you're into, yeah, religion was made to spread. Exactly. So it's not appropriation if you sort of, you know, if you're, a, even if you're a, from bloody, grew up in a council flat in South London like me. Yeah, yeah. You know, isn't, if I end up, if I became a Buddhist, you know, I'm not appropriating something. I'm actually just joining a, yeah, yeah, a yeah. thing. It's I'm not a Buddhist, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I picked that. But, um, just, yeah, you know, that's it. But all religions. yourself license to go Buddhist if you want. Well, I th- yeah. But yeah. I think, you know, if it's a religion that's made, was made to spread the world, I don't think you can then, Two thousand years down the line, be accused of appropriating it by yeah. getting on board. Absolutely. Well, I've long said, uh, and I don't know if you could call it a theory or just sort of. I, th- I think it's just a thing. But like, I don't think the Bible was ever supposed to be sort of taken in the way that it has been. Like, I'm not religious at all, but yeah, like, yeah. you know, pe- people have done wild things with uh, with religion. But I think the Bible was only ever written to be uh, like sort of a, a guideline of good ideas of how to not be a. It's also quite. Um, it's it's all over the show. On the yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I might bleep that out. Not only is it the first one, you drop the biggest one <laughs> yeah. first. That is a bold move. Good grief. Um, but yeah, and also I think the Bible's all over the shop. If you look at it, one minute it's saying one thing, next minute it's saying another. It's not. You know, I do think it's a collection of yeah. thoughts of their time. Yeah. And to anyone who treats it as, you know, as gospel, gospel yeah. ironically, is uh, I think is getting a bit silly. Yeah. But all at the same time, I remember I read the Quran when I was younger. As you do, and uh, yes, that was interesting. You run out of Hardy things. Boys books, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um, and that is very much that sort of does state almost that it is a guide. But there is some, yeah, yeah, some of the some of the different Bibles and things do have a sort of this is almost like a manual, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, sort of for life. Yeah, whereas like, uh, yeah, I don't you've, you've got the Ten Commandments, and that is very much right. Before you get into this book, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just, just read this. The so there's, yeah. there's more stories. The index. And there's more that it's about, <laughs> but like just before you sort of don't. Read the rest of it. Just, just remember, don't, don't, don't sleep with your neighbour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wife. 
at all their ox. All their ox. You know, yeah, leave the wife and the ox <laughs> alone. So many reasons not to sleep with an ox. I know. I think it'd be a vicious animal if you... Uh, well, oh yeah, I mean, I don't think they're, they're up for it. No. You know. My mum and dad once, they went on holiday to Cornwall, went for a ramble through a field. Yeah. And uh, got chased by cows. Yeah. So. I mean, they were in their house. Yes. Place. If you're in a <laughs> cow's field, you're in a cow's yeah. home. If we're outside, I think essentially we're always in their house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, uh, it reminded me, I just, when, I was, when I was younger, uh, when I was a reprobate, if you will, I wasn't that bad of a child, but yeah. sort of... Um, when I was sort of in my early 20s, I, I just wanted to be cool and fit in with the other kids. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, we was at a, a party at my friend's house and it was like right in the sticks of sort of absolute nowhere. And next to his house was a field full of cows. And um, and a, a bunch of my mates decided they wanted to go cow tipping. And I, I already had that knowledge that. that cow tipping isn't actually a thing. But I, I thought, Joe, you know what, it'll be funny. Let's go along. Yeah, yeah. So we went along. We've gone into this field and uh, it's pitch black. There was no light whatsoever. It was barely any moonlight. And we were walking through this field and then there was a wall in the middle and sort of we all carefully sort of hopped over the wall. Yeah. Uh, and then one of my friends found a cow, ran up to it, slapped it <laughs> on the arse, yeah. then turned around and ran away and the cow just didn't do anything. It sort of moved slightly. Yeah. Uh, and we were just like, ah, he's done it! And we all ran away, all scared. And um, uh, most of us found the open gate and went straight through it. Yeah. And one of them went over the wall and ripped his jeans in half. Mm. And, uh, Left some of his jeans there. Children, eh? Yes. Yeah, I don't imagine... I mean, the, the size of a cow, I don't imagine it would particularly feel... No. ...a human hand. But I'd also... I mean, I'd feel it, but I don't... You know, I imagine it would be... It can take that pretty well. Yeah. Wouldn't have bothered it too much. No, well, I should also point out at this point that I was, I was dead against the idea yeah. of cow tipping. <laughs> but I just I just knew that you cut Like, it's not a thing. It's yeah, not actually yeah. possible, To as, as far as I'm aware. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I've never... I remember hearing about it. There's all loads of old stories but I don't really think yeah I don't know yeah I'm assuming they can work their way up because they, I think, they, yeah, lie, they, down. they lay down yeah. yeah I know they do lay down in a certain way though with their back legs sort of one sort of underneath and across yeah so it might be something like that maybe you, it's difficult for them to get up if you push them and their legs don't get into that position yeah that would be my They're scientific just, the, the, stroke well, that's total it. guess but people probably think that it's a thing like they can't get back up but they have run away yeah, so they've, yeah, not, yeah. they've not stuck yeah, around yeah. to find out that they can just stand back up. Yes. And then um, it's, uh, I like to imagine they're like elephants and they just remember. Yeah, they're nice animals. I um, I went to a uh, wildlife sort of sanctuary, a sanctuary yeah. for animals that have been... With cows? Is that a farm? Or no, because it was, it was a sanctuary in the sense of it, it was animals that have been uh, saved oh, from okay. slaughterhouses, yeah. essentially. Like they'd sort of, you know save them at the last minute and they they just taken this it was amazing this this old couple that had this farm down in sort of near Hastings yeah and they just basically created a almost like a an old people's home for animals to go and just see out their days yeah and it was lovely and That's I really nice. got to hang out with all the cows and cows like they, what was really surprised me and again this is just that cynical side they, they can they, speak english well yeah they, they're actually very they're fluent in many languages <laughs> um Apparently Wales have this as a side thing, but yeah. apparently Wales can learn languages really quick. Like because really? you know every pod of Wales speaks a different language. They don't have, yes. There's not a set language. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. not Wales language. Yeah, I did know that. But when they meet another pod of Wales, they learn each other's language super really? quick. Yeah, they just. I mean, like, there's got to be similarities. I mean, yeah, but there's similarities in all language, aren't yeah, there? Yeah, so they're sort of Latin. Like, there's some it's people. Nasty. I think they're just a sort of. They're like certain groups of people who are better at languages, like Dutch people. You yeah, know, a Dutch person who can just pick up. They just pick up English in about a week. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, they're just. It's, I think they're more malleable. Well, that's it. I'm from, I'm from Essex. So a lot of Dutch people know English better than. Totally. Yeah. It's embarrassing when you sort of. Oh, tra- yeah. If you travel a lot, and the amount of times I meet people from overseas who can speak English so well, yeah. and I can't even say shit in their language. But anyway, yeah, the cows were just very pleasant. I can say shit in many languages. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but we got told that all the cows had different personalities as we were really? walking, as we were walking to the field, and I was so cynical. Uh, and like it's, she, she was saying, "Oh, you'll meet these two. They're like they're the juveniles, and they're sort of they're no a bit way. naughty." Then you meet this one; he's like the sort of the, the, the head of the herd, so everyone's a bit sort of you know oh, leads him a bit. And it was I thought it was all nonsense. We got in there and. To a cow, every single personality was exactly how they described it. You could the moment we saw these two sort of sneaky little, little ones, yeah. they were sort of they were sort of sizing us you up. Their names, we were yeah, and they just they they definitely were sort of naughty kids almost. That's incredible. Yeah, it was weird. I had no idea that it was a yeah. 
There's three um, great tits having a great old time out there on the bird feeder. Yeah, I can hear them. Yeah, they're, That's... they're normally not that loud. They're, I think they have, I think there's one and then two of the others aren't with it and having a bit of a fight over who gets to eat the peanuts. It's the rules plenty for all. Yeah. It's shared, right? I know. I just saw them. Two of them had a little ding dong on the on the on the feeder. Maybe they're flirting. Yeah, oh, it could be actually. It could like be. a sort of playground flirting. Yeah, I'm basically watching one of them trying to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, lad. Yeah, that's that's weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. I obviously from listening to uh, your own podcast, uh, which is now rebranded as uh, Two Vegan Idiots, yes. which I was listening to on the way here. Uh, like I listened to it anyway, but um, yeah, very good. Um, what's my point? From yeah, I, I know that you are a, a somewhat of an ornithologist. An ornithologist is that birds? I don't. Well, I like birds. Have I'm, I done it wrong? Is it? I don't. I don't know. What's ornithology? I mean, it could, it that could be like it could a be. dentist. <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, no, it is. Is it? No, that's all for dentistry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's an ornithologist? Hang on. Right. I mean, you've asked First the all, wrong guy. Yeah. Because I am a study of my birds. My vocabulary is limited due to my poor. School. It is ornithology. Oh, it is ornithology. Yeah. So <laughs> somebody studies birds. Now it. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm very much a. I've just got a few bird feeders in the garden. Yeah. And I just, I really enjoy watching them. I sort of, I sit here some days, and I will just sit here with a tea. Yeah. And I'm just, I watch them for ages. It's really relaxing. Yeah. You know, I, I, I used to find the same thing. I used to have fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd find that really relaxing watching them, but um, they they die. Well, they do. Yeah, um, <laughs> there is that. This well, is the luxury of yeah. wild birds. Is it birds? You know, put, they just go, some, just go away, and you don't know what's happened to them. That's it. Put some nuts out, and you'll see them. They'll come. They'll come and go. Yeah, yeah. See the best of it. I've currently got a um, a robin that keeps trying to make a nest in the outside. A chunk of our bathroom extractor fan. Oh. <laughs> so basically, the outside the grate on the outside wall yeah. is um, there's no cover on it, and so right. there's about a sort of six to eight inch tube going through the wall, and then at this side, it's obviously an extractor fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it started when I was away for about a week, came back, and I turned the extractor fan on, and loads of leaves just flew into my bathroom. Oh. And it had built a nest inside the thing. Yeah. Luckily, the fan didn't do anything bad. It blows it. out anyway, doesn't it? Well, it blows out, but it also there was leaves just sort of caught in the fan already. Right. So it just them ones that just ripped and pulled into the thing. Yeah. And then now it's become this sort of ongoing thing where I sort of need to cover the cover the outside, but I also don't I, I don't know where it's going to go if I do. So yeah. I feel guilty trying to. You put like a bird box on a wall. Well, I might right next to it. So yeah. I, I've actually considered that, which is quite long you know, lengths to go to. Some people just wouldn't give a shit. I, I used I just to, feel bad. Um, when I was in primary school, I think, yeah, so when we were, we were quite young, I, I used to, uh, in, I was in a sort of wildlife club thing. We'd yeah. go to, uh, we'd go to like ponds and sort of observe the wildlife. And so, I, I, I was pretty cool. Um, yeah, <laughs> a real cool guy. <laughs> but we used to, uh, yeah, we used to study like um, owl pellets and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see what sort of stuff they'd been eating. But we, we made quite a few uh, bird boxes as well. Yeah. Very easy. Very satisfying yeah. to do. Feels good. Yeah, maybe I should do. I should knock one up. Yeah. Make it a little house. Bat boxes as well. Yeah, bat boxes. I love bats. Yeah. They're like, I've, I once got surrounded by bats. Like Batman style. Yeah. No, was... no, you're scared of them and fight crime. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I became <laughs> the Dark Destroyer or whatever. What's his nickname? <laughs> That's the guy from The Chase. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I became a, a quiz expert. Yeah. Um, no, I was camping once. Yeah. And, um, and me and my friends were just we were all drinking and yeah, you know, we were around a campsite yeah. and I just went off for a wander around the woods on my own. I went down this long sort of hill through the woods, got to the bottom there was a fence and I thought, Well, I'm climbing that fence. Of Climbed course. it, got down to a lake and it was just as the sun was going down. And I just sat on the edge of the lake and I was watching there were swans just obviously starting to go to sleep yeah. and stuff. And just as the sun went down, it just went proper dark for the first moment. Yeah, yeah. All these bats came out of the trees, really, and just started flying around me. Like, because I was still, you know, I didn't. I thought, don't move, you know, just stay still. And they were just everywhere. It was proper. Yeah. I could hear them, like I could hear wings flying past my ear, really closely. Really, yeah, it was wow. amazing. And I just sort of stayed still and just let it happen yeah, for about yeah. for about five minutes. They flew around, then they all went off and did their own thing. And Did I just got, No, there was some that were so close. Yeah. The proper, I felt the wind go past my face of their wings yeah and i went back to my friends and told them they didn't believe me <laughs> uh, i mean i had a similar experience once in that uh, when i was in the uh, cubs or yeah. the scouts whatever it was 
um, uh, I went went camping. It was the only ever one of those camping trips I went on, and um, and late at night, uh, a, a bunch of the guys from the older group um, took all their clothes off and ran through my tent, and I was surrounded. It was mm. horrendous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So similar, but <laughs> yeah, much worse. Much more what's uh, emotionally damaging. Yeah, <laughs> not something I wish to relive. And yeah. So now we are trying focus, which is mango and pineapple with ginseng. Ooh. And it says plus vitamin B6 here on the back. Oh, cool. I've not had any today. so yeah, Which contributes to the reduction of tiredness and fatigue. Oh, well, that's good because I'm driving to Cardiff after this. Oh, right. Yeah, maybe, yeah. let's get a few cups of this down. Yeah, the, the turmeric one actually says on it, uh, turmeric helps to support digestion. Oh, there we go. Well, yeah, I, 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 I do tend to have it. I think a turmeric tea is a good evening tea. I'm yeah. Gonna, like, oh, I, I, that makes it blows sense, my it? mind when people have, like my brother, he loves just tea, proper yeah. English breakfast tea, milk. He has like a cup of tea before going to bed and that absolutely blows my mind. Uh, I do sometimes. But what, it's got caffeine Yeah. and it's, it's a diuretic, it's going to make you wee. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm cool yeah, with that. I'm correct. cool with that. Yeah, no, I, I, I accept that and um, I seem to be quite good at not, Wet in the bed. Really? So Do you wake up in the night for a wee? Uh, only very recently. What I'm 33 you? now. Oh, right. Yeah, that's about when it happened for me as well. That's when I sort of now don't really drink. I've just drink. I almost started lowering my water intake as I get past about 9 p.m. Yeah. It's mad. That is. I mean, I that makes I, sense. But because of because of this antibiotic I'm on, I, I have to have a, a full glass of water with it. Yeah. So. Uh, you have to have one before bed. Yeah. Oh my be- well, it also um, I have to have it late at night because it also makes me uh, makes my eyes photosensitive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so sort of bright lights all hurt. So really? if I don't have it late at night, wow. Um, yeah, I'm also not supposed to go out into direct sunlight without sort of heavy covering. Really? Yeah. Apparently, it sort of affects you. I'm not allowed to. It says on the box on the side of it, um, do not use sunbeds. Wow. And I don't know if that's just advice for yeah. sort of general life, <laughs> or particularly for the antibiotics. <laughs> yeah. Probably, I mean, that's something I don't know. You needed that bit of advice. Are you a regular sunbed I'm, user? As you can tell, I'm, I'm very brown. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm fairly white. So no, it's uh, it's not something that I don't really go on hot holidays either. Right. More likely to go snowboarding okay. than, uh, than sit on a beach. I broke my wrist snowboarding last year. Did you? It was really annoying. I've yeah. never, ever had an injury. I've always got away with it. Yeah. And then I've what snowboarding or in general? It's just snowboarding. Yeah. I've also I've never broken a bone before. Have though. you not? I'd fractured a metatarsal once, but Good just by it. walking. Yeah. That's what the doc- that's, I went to the doctor's having had a pain in my foot for about two weeks. Really? Is that a tendon metatarsal? No, it's one of the very thin bones thin bone? that runs the full length of your foot. You know, one of them thin ones. I yeah, yeah, Wayne Rooney. Yeah. And oh getting, God! And it just fractured, but I didn't know. That I just, must have been I, agony. No, it was it was painful to walk on, but it wasn't agony. I know you can walk on it. You just yeah. got to be gentle. Yeah. And after it just got worse and worse over the space of a week, and then the next week I was like, I've got to go to the doctor's about this. I assumed it was just a little muscle thing. Yeah. They took me for an X-ray, and I'd fractured a metatarsal. And when I said to them, "How did I do that?" They said, "Have you done any sports or anything?" I went, "No." And they looked at it, and they just saw how the bone looked. I went, "Oh, it looks like it's just wear and tear." Like an impact fracture. Sort of no, thing. I just just wore it out. <laughs> it's like, you know, just probably, you know, I, I, I walk a lot. Yeah. And I sort of, you know. I friend think of it's mine. Like I'm a hundred years old. <laughs> yeah. The fact that I now <laughs> I wee in the night and I've, I've just got a fracture from just yeah. walking. Did require a turmeric tea late at night. Yeah. To, uh, <laughs> Apart age, from that, I've had very few injuries. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've broken a lot of bones. Really? Yeah. Are you accident prone or? Yeah. Right. Reasonably. But I've, yeah, I've broken my right leg twice. My uh, I've broken. Well, amongst fingers, I've, I've probably had about ten breaks really? on fingers. Yeah, um, broken my big right toe twice and dislocated at the same time. How are all these happening? Sports injuries, uh, general injuries. Just, yeah, just sort of life. Broken my nose about seven times. What the hell? Yeah. How do you how? Um, I well, I broke it a lot because when I was younger, um, uh, like before I learnt to put my hands out, I just kept falling over. Really? Yeah. I don't know if I had particularly small feet or something. What about the balance. leg? How did you break your leg? Uh, football. Oh, right, okay, that's a sports injury. Yeah, so I got kicked in the shin with that. Oh, so yeah, that was oh. a sports injury. 
Uh, so I got kicked in the shin uh, when I was in Beavers. And, uh, and they kept saying to me, just get up and walk it off. I was like, I, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want God. to. And then I went to the hospital, uh, got the x-rayed. And we, uh, my mum and I sat there for about six hours, six and a yeah. half hours. And they came out at the end and said, oh, it's not broken. Uh, just go home, just walk on it. That'll be fine. And I went home. My mum spent like three days trying to get me to walk on it. And I couldn't. And yeah. I was going around like a sort of rubbish wheelbarrow. Yeah. With, like one foot and sort of my hands on my back. And uh, I slept with my leg out of the bed. Oh God. And then uh, and then we went back and they said, oh, yeah, that is broken. Oh. Um, but as a result, uh, it started to set. And uh, so m- my my right leg is uh, not straight slightly, oh but like it twisted. So yeah. it's, it's straight down, but it's twisted. So my right foot goes in slightly. Oh, really? So and I've learned to walk normally because I just got through shoes like really quickly because I only walk, I only yeah, walk on one yeah, part yeah. of my foot. So over the years, I've learned to walk with my foot straight. But as a result, that's um, added to the wear and tear of my knee. Oh, so now I've got God. a bad knee, which I further hurt snowboarding. Oh, this is all terrible. Yeah, damaged the uh, ACL. Um, I'm about to try this tea. Yes. Sorry that you <laughs> ended that horrible story. And you ended it as I was <laughs> sniffing a tea. But, oh, um, that sounds horrible. This it, is delicious. It mm. smells delicious. Oh, my. So we've got a real pineapple. Oh, that's, yeah. Whiff. I, I, I hope it's... I've got, I've got a I'll tell you, this is the problem with fruit teas. Is um they smell amazing, but if you haven't let them brew enough, they're so underwhelming when you drink oh, it. Oh, let me tell you, that's all right. That is nice, actually. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. It's much more mangoey than I thought it was. Yeah. It doesn't smell as mangoey as it tastes. I thought it smelled as mangoey as it tastes. Oh, so it, I was it, my, my my nose uh, really picked up pineapple, yeah. but when I tasted it, I got well, that's, much more um, mango. They did warn me when I broke it for the seventh time. They said, "Watch out, you will smell a lot of mango." I said, "Right, yeah, right." <laughs> I'm meant to. to I'm currently on the waiting list to get my nose re, mm. right, basically broken and yeah. reshaped because I, I, I had that. I was born with a broken nose. Right. Um, oh. Well, yeah, it's just my nose bone was bo- was bent when I was born, but they didn't really notice. So I, I've only got one working nostril. Yeah. Which is just annoying. It's not a. It doesn't. It's not crazily ruining my life or yeah. anything, but it does mean during high summer when like pollen counts up or during winter yeah basically you know when you're a bit more prone your nostrils are already a bit more prone to like getting a bit of agitation yeah, yeah. this one just can't carry the weight so yeah. i go through chunks of time where i just don't have a really working nostrils yeah it doesn't you know it's hard it can't, can't take the pressure yeah it's a lot it can't be a one-man team <laughs> so i so for years it's been happening and it's definitely been getting worse the last few years really so I'm currently, but they they reckon it, I might not get it because it's not essential. I understand yeah. that NHS is under a lot of pressure. So, but I'm I'm being assessed in June yeah. to see if they will. They are very talk. good. That's what I'd love. It. It's basically what they do. Yeah, they break my nose, reshape the the that what's the, I thought it's just your nose septum. bone. Is it septum? Yeah. yeah, they'd reshape it so that it would open up the inside. The other, yeah, yeah, and then I would have. If it worked to so work in that's nostrils. what I was going to ask. Are you getting a septoplasty or a rhinoplasty? What's a rhinoplasty? It's the outside. Oh, well, so that'd be sort of straightening it. Oh, it's yeah, because on the outside it looks all right. There's a bit of a lump up here, but like, yeah, inside is what I need. I need the bone moved over to clear the room for this. Yeah. So my septum uh, used to be S-shaped, sort of quite significantly. Wow. Um, and they, so they, but it was also the outside was curved like that, yeah. so it was. There was actually more space on this side, but at the top it was worse because it sort of bent out that way. Yeah, and then further yeah. down, like there was no space at the bottom. Oh, um, so it goes in further on that side than it does on that side because yeah. it's still, they straightened it a bit, but it's still a bit S shaped. Mm. So I tend to only have one working nostril at a time, but I can yeah. never guarantee which one it will be. Right, they just share. I've got, they're both share working. The load. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. One has a day off and yeah. the other one clocks in. But um, before it was, so I had that done at, when I was 19. Mm. Um, and but like I, I sort of the last time I broke my nose, I was about thirteen. I was playing rugby in okay. school, um, and uh, yeah, so I had it done, like had the inside and outside done. So it's septorhinoplasty, right? Which um, many surgeons consider to be one of the worst pains that you can endure. Really? Yeah. Why you're not under general anaesthetic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, yeah. But just the aftermath. Because uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's quite unpleasant. I suppose it is. They are. Yeah, it's your head, isn't it? You're yeah. Having a, <laughs> you're having a, yeah, an operation on your face. They, well, they did. They did warn basically, like where the drills go in. It's very oh, close to your brain. Oh my god. I mean, yeah, there is. There are downsides. So good luck with yours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry. I see. It's it might not do. It, no, but but I would love it if they did. Just to, I'd love to be able to breathe. Yeah. Properly. It's quite good. Breath. 
it I'm is. It doesn't smell it. properly. Because see, I get, I get. It's not like it's a, it's totally shut, but it's just it's very. Yeah. I, I, it's very very closed off, so yeah. I can sometimes get a little bit of like, aroma through it yeah. <laughs> if I try. I see, my my left one isn't as good as the right one because that's the side that the S sort of pokes out at, at the top where it gets yeah, thinner, yeah. obviously. Um, yeah, so it does it does get worse, but occasionally I'll be sort of I might walk. The problem is. Because sometimes, like if I have it, even the just the slightest block nose, yeah, um, it, I'll just I'll really really notice it, um, and then as soon as it gets free, my sinuses feel like I've just jammed a hot needle through. Right, it. it's so painful. Yeah, that's what I get a bit of that. Mm. Just yeah, because it's just it's just very temperamental. Yeah. it's very inflamed. Yeah, because yeah. it just goes. Oh, you can smell. I can smell all the things yeah. that it's so much so that it will hurt. Tea is lovely. This, yeah, the, it's really, the extra it's, sort of minute that that's had is really yeah, bag in delicious. again. I'm a real bag in fan. Mm. I know with certain teas like green tea, bag in is an absolute car crash. Yeah. Gets too tart and yeah. bitter. Breakfast tea, throw it in the bin. Yeah, but with fruit teas, I do find you know leave the bag in, you get a lot more of the uh, yeah, that, I mean, delicious, delicious fruit flavour. It, it's really nice, isn't it? Is I don't nice. know what the ginseng is playing at. Like I don't know, you can't really, can you taste ginseng? I. I don't know. I can I can really just taste the uh, the fruit in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I don't really know what ginseng tastes like. No, like. I don't either. Ginseng to me sounds like one of those. Um, it's like a mindfulness thing in that it's it's just something that you imagine. Yeah. So it could be that they've just imagined that there's ginseng in in this tea. Mm. It could actually be the root vegetable that they're showing on the front of that box. Oh, that, yeah, that could be that. That probably is, isn't it? That's what ginseng looks like. I never knew. It looks like another little yeah. It looks a bit like a turmeric root. Yeah. Looks like a cross between uh, a, a rubbish carrot yes. and turmeric. Yeah, with some sort of wispy bits at the bottom. Yeah, with, a, with an afro. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Good end to that observation about you. Guys, do you ever, do you ever know what ginseng roots are like? <laughs> just one of those bits of observational comedy I'm working on at the minute. Is uh, well, I'm a I'm a straight observational. Do you know what? Speaking of observations, on the way here, uh, I was driving along and I thought I already thought it was quite funny. Just uh, just off the M25, I saw a field that was like a massive field, and just right in the centre of it, uh, none of them were moving, but there was about forty seagulls. Oh yeah, just having yeah. a chill, just having a meeting, just hanging out. Yeah, We're having an AGM. The, yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, there was one on a podium with a microphone. So, yeah. uh, I, I thought it was just doing a live podcast record, but yeah. it may have been. I saw of, that. I used to have a routine about. How I saw some ducks look like they had a meeting. Like it was, it was in um, where was it? Was it in Edinburgh? There was a place called Duddingston Lock. It's beautiful yeah. uh, lock, just the uh, just the other side of Arthur's Seat. Okay. And it's um, it's so near to the city, but so many people don't know about it. I don't like, know about it. So you can walk it in like half an hour from oh, really? from an old town, mm. and you just you feel like you're a hundred miles away from the fringe. It's yeah. Love. It's one of my favourite places. That sounds but, glorious. And it's a it's a wildlife reserve as well, so it's just loads ah. of birds everywhere. And I, yeah, I once just saw a bunch of ducks sort of congregating in one side of the lake or the lock, and uh, and it looked like they were all facing one of them. And like, like as if he was speaking, and yeah. he was sort of in front of them, and it was like, rah, rah, rah. and then they all just—it was like they all listened for a bit, and then they all just dispersed, and it was like he'd given them That's instructions. Incredible. I saw a similar thing with foxes once yeah. uh, in in my town, because um, uh, my friend and I uh, we used to um, before before we had sort of more inventive things to do. I don't think I, I don't think I was old enough to. No, I must have been. I passed myself when I was eighteen. Yeah. But we just used to drive around. And that was our thing. Like we just didn't. We'd, we went to pubs, but occasionally we'd just go. Oh, do you want to go for a drive? It's like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But rather than actually going anywhere, we'd just do laps around my village. Yeah. Um, the town. Uh, but there was a, a particular road that we went down. And we went went down it a couple of times, about forty minutes apart. Yeah, yeah. And one time we we're going down there. It was just loads of foxes heading in the same direction, which yeah, was yeah, towards yeah. a big park, like Ashington Park. Yeah. A massive park. We just saw loads of them running towards that. And we were like, that's weird. I wonder what they're all doing. Yeah. And then we came back past again about 40 minutes later and they were all going back the other way. And we were like, oh, they've had their meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're they're off now. They've done what they were up to. I reckon uh, like the, the main dealers just handed out all the crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Foxes are just like, yeah, let's go. That's funny, isn't it? It is, Very yeah. Weird. fascinated by what animals get up to and we're, yeah. we don't, we're not watching them. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, I mean, you know, like it's weird that... I do. Uh, well, actually, speaking of, there was a show about cats, yeah. and they put trackers on loads of cats, yeah. and they showed the routes that they took, and um, and none of them ever crossed paths. Like they had their own 
path and route yeah, that they yeah, went yeah. on. Um, but they they had like it was it was their own territory, yeah, which yeah. is why they they kick off so much when enemies yeah. sort of walk through. But they just they all went on sort of like up to I think it's like up to six miles from their house. Wow, they walked That's so far. And but they sort of they obviously left a trail yeah. of like where they'd been, and sort of none of the others sort of followed that trail. Mm. Or whatever. I always there's a couple of cats that come into my garden that I sort of chase out. I like I like cats, but yeah. Because I get, I get a lot of birds in the garden. I don't want them yes. having a go. Yeah. I want the birds so I, to feed. I, I like this cat. is a safe space. And my house, my house back's onto a field. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I should get some birds. But somebody, there's a, I can't remember who it is. A comedian's got a really funny routine I saw about bumping into their cat. Like, sort of about a mile from their oh, house. Oh, I think I know it. And it's, so, I remember, I, can't, I need to remember who it is, but it's such a funny, I remember just hearing them say it and losing it because it's such a funny concept for a <laughs> yeah. bit. Yeah. Bumping into your own cat somewhere. Oh, that's amazing. And he said even the cat looked at him like, <laughs> well, this is weird, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that's it. That's amazing. Yeah. I did I did once, um, I saw my cat walking down my road once while I was driving down the road. It's yeah, yeah. quite a long straight road. And I just stopped and said, put him in my car. Oh, yeah, yeah. And drive home. Was he, all, was he all right about it? Yeah, he didn't seem to mind. Oh, it was right. like, it was one of those where if he could talk, I imagine he'd have gotten in and been like, where you been? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just around. <laughs> Funny. I um, I I had another routine years ago. This was about, and this happened in Wimbledon. I lived in Wimbledon for a bit, and I once saw, uh, I was I was just round the corner from my house. Yeah, I saw on a lamp post a sign saying "Lost Cat," and it was just quite a standard looking black and white cat. Yeah, and as I was reading the sign, I, on my life the cat walked past <laughs> me, and I was like, oh, "This is the cat." So I saw, and it said, um, uh, "To call this number," and yeah. I called the number. And they said, I said, like, I've, I think I've just seen your cat. I'm at the lamppost on Pelham Road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, I've just, I think the cat is here. It's just walking past me. And I started stroking it. And um, and I said, where are you? And they were just about 100 yards up the road. And I yeah. said, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of start trying to lure it up towards you. And I did. And then they came out to meet me. That's and incredible. it just wasn't their cat. Oh. It just looked a bit like it. Yeah, just an imposter. Yeah, it was just another black and white. It, like, yeah, it had pretty different markings in hindsight. Yeah. But I just got so excited. I was about to save a it, cat. It was pure white. Yeah, but I also felt bad that Wearing I got their cat. hopes up. Yes. So, oh, oh but God, then yeah. and the cat as well was just confused because yeah, yeah. I just lured it. I started, started doing that, and I sort of lured it about a hundred meters down the road. Yeah. And by then, this other person had come out. He's like, "Oh, that's not it." <laughs> it's like so. It was just weird three-way <laughs> confusion of like us, me apologizing to the cat for wasting its time, oh, that's apologizing to the person for wasting their time. But it was fun. Yeah, a friend of mine had a, a routine. Who you know, actually, Matt Abington. Mm. Yeah, he Hello, uh, Matt. he he said to uh, bring up. Cause, like, are you particularly good with faces? Don't know. Because we don't know ever met like once, and then I randomly saw you outside like the blunderbuss. Yeah, yeah. And you were just like, oh, hey man. Oh yeah, no, it's, that's true. Yeah, it's probably that is probably. I reckon I'm quite good with faces actually. Yeah. In, in not that like, I never, I never think oh, I'm great with faces, but yeah, I'm good at. If I yeah, if I meet somebody once, if I talk to them, yeah, you know, then I, normally I will. And it might I'm not I'm not amazing with names, so I won't always go like yeah, yeah. I won't see someone again and go yo and say their name. Yeah. But I and and I'm also quite. I've got a lot better as I've got into my sort of late thirties of having the confidence to say to somebody, mate, I remember you, but I genuinely I can't remember your name. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I used to just try and just blag it. Yeah. I'm I'm so willing to just. Like, I've got enough friends. If they if they yeah. get annoyed by that, and well, like, I, I don't, don't want to be your that, friend. I genuinely don't think people do get annoyed by no. it. I think if somebody does get annoyed by it, that's weird. It's as well. such a common thing. The amount of times that you say I can't remember your name, and yeah. the other person says me either. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. So I think that's what I've got a lot better now at doing that because I do. I recognise loads of people, especially because you do Edinburgh. And, yeah, yeah. You know, if you're in Edinburgh all the time, you see you meet hundreds and hundreds of people over the month. Yeah. I think it's if you next time you see them in some random place, you recognise them. Yeah. And if you just say it, I did it. Like, I was at the um, I was at the Glasgow stand a uh, week before last, and afterwards um, I, we went to a bar over the other side in, in Glasgow City. Yeah. Because like, the stand is just out in the sort of near the West End. Yes. And a guy walked up to me and went like, "Hey, girl!" Like that. <laughs> and I just was like, I absolutely recognised him. And I was yeah. like, "Hey, mate!" How are you? <laughs> yeah. And um and I, we started chatting and I just I just knew I had to nip it in the bud early because yeah. I absolutely knew I knew him, but I just I couldn't remember where I'd met him and yeah. it turned out he was one of the stand, he's somebody who works at the Glasgow stand but wasn't working that right. weekend okay. so I just met him last time I was there yeah and I just said it to him I went mate I've got to say it I just I can't remember 
how we know each other. Yeah. And like, and he was then he was just went, he was totally cool with it. He went, oh yeah, I work at the stand, but I'm not there this weekend. And it was like, and it was just nice because then we just got that out of the way, and yeah, I didn't yeah, have yeah. to spend the whole. It's easier to bond. Well, yeah, because because once if you've got that in the back of your mind, it's hard to have a convers- proper conversation with somebody. Yeah. Because you're constantly thinking, oh, I hope they don't do something where I have to say who's that, where I know them from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just, I think it's good to if you recognise somebody, just ask them. How yeah. about, like, where do I know you from? Where do we where have we met? Yeah. Then they're normally totally cool to do it. So I'm, like I'm a pretty anxious guy anyway. Yeah. Um, and I've just anything that sort of. I know makes me anxious. Yeah, I'm like that, and I'll just I'll just attack it head on, and it yeah, and it yeah. cuts out so much anxiety. It's amazing. Like, I'll just like jump straight in. Like I'm working on a bit at the minute about sort of anxious conversations yeah, of yeah. Um, of like calling people and uh, like kind of how how you just like, I always plan conversations before I call. Them. Right. And <laughs> like when people drop their own name as answering the phone, yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> freaking out and kind of like. It's, you know, it's my point. Like, it's all right if you like Domino's Pizza or a business yeah, or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You know, you know what you're gonna say. Yeah. But like, the other week while I was uh, while I was doing <laughs> some work, really funny. Um, I called one guy and he answered with his name, and I was just like, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then about 20 minutes later, I called another guy and he answered with his name, what? and I was just ah, <laughs> freaking out. Sounds like they're a private detective. Or yeah, something. exactly. A film. <laughs> Bond, Cold James Bond. Totally. Ah! <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I such that a would weird throw, power would, move. Yeah, it would definitely throw me. Yeah, I'm really interested in that sort of uh, power type thing. You know, there's um, I read a really good book on body language yeah. by a guy called, a guy called Joe Navarro. He used to work for like the FBI and stuff. Yeah. He's on. He's like he's a guy. They they made a TV show with Tim Roth, oh, okay. who plays like an FBI body language expert. Right. And he goes and does interviews and stuff. Do they use that name? I don't know if they. I can't. I've not seen I the show, but Joe name. Navarro is the guy who wrote the book. He was sort of like right. he literally wrote the book on the topic. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Dave Navarro. Uh, he was in uh, what band was he in? Um, James Addiction. Addiction? No, it? James Addiction. Yeah, it was James yeah. Addiction. Um, but uh, yeah, and I so I've read I read that, and weirdly I read another couple of. I went through a phase of reading loads of books about psychology, and off off the, of them I read some other books about body language and things that what they show. Yeah. And it re- taught me so much, and now I learn. What I've learned is a lot of people in in comedy, not so much comedians, but people in and around comedy, yeah, yeah, like agents and all that. A lot of them have clearly done some sort of management courses, all yeah, because right? I can tell from little things that they do, like their body language when you're chatting to them, their the way they even shake your hand. There's a couple of agents I know who really um, go for the over the top handshake. Do you know when you like both sides? No, so no, so you. Yeah, let's, let's do it. So if you do that and you sort of just turn the hand, oh so yeah, it's a dominant thing where you put your hand yeah, over yeah, there, yeah. just arm in charge. That's and then some of them do go for the slap, like put their hand on the other side of yours. Yeah. But then the trick there is, and because I'm aware of it, and I find it all hilarious. Uh, I don't give a shit about yeah. powers, like sort of between me. I don't give a shit if they're more dominant than me. Yeah. But what I do like doing is if I think somebody's doing it because they've learnt it from a book or something, or they've been on a course, I like fucking with them. Yeah. So like if somebody does that thing where they shake your hand and then they put their hand on the other side of yours I just then with my other hand go over there <laughs> and you can watch them go this wasn't in the course so. <laughs> but so the next step from that is uh, one, one on the face yeah 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 just hug and just go for a big <laughs> hug and sometimes I, I sometimes see it with uh, it's a few agents as well that I know in comedy and I've, they've probably all done it and it's not a bad thing they're learning yeah. how to be better in meetings yeah. aren't they but I've uh, there's a couple I've witnessed uh, mirroring body language so I'm chatting to them and because I can be quite awkward when I talk, I'm yeah. quite sort of physical. I sort of move my hands and I move around a bit, and it's just a, it's probably a nervous tick. But yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll notice them doing them, and it's really noticeable because I'm not. I'm making quite unnatural movements. Yeah. And I see them mirroring it. Oh, that's. Funny. And in my head, I'm like, but oh, they're doing the thing. Yeah. They're trying to mirror me to make think to sort of because they think that's making me more comfortable. But all this done is make me aware of what they're doing. Yeah. So then I'll start throwing in some weirder ones. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll start sitting really strange. And I'll watch them just doing the weird things I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. I find it fascinating. Yeah, a, a mate of mine um, did a similar thing because he uh, is a touring musician. We, yeah, we yeah. went to um, uh, Holland, and like, they they got there late at night. Um, like he's just playing with this band, and sort of turned up, and and this essentially a, like a VW camper turned up to pick them up as yeah. their like tour bus, and it was just full of like stoned hippies. <laughs> and um, and he got out and he's looking at a guy and he knew full well that he's on MDMA. Yeah, yeah, and he was yeah. sort of looking at him, so he's just standing there with his hand like on his chest and just slowly <laughs> moving his fingers, <laughs> just like that. that. And then the guy was just going, <laughs> 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 yeah. "Is that 
Maybe it's just, oh, no. He said, it was, he said it was amazing fun, just like doing little <laughs> bits to freak people out. I might start doing that. So yeah. I noticed stuff like that. Well, as yeah, well. it's worth well, reading the book. It's called, yeah, it's called, um, I think it's called What Everyone Is Saying or something like that. Okay. And it's, yeah, I'm sure it's Joan of Aro, but it's just, it's just a really excellent, you know, it takes you through, it shows you pictures of like, because yeah. he, he's taking you through showing what he was what looking out for when people were being interviewed for right. bloody murders and stuff. And he was talking about little body language, like defensive body language and all that. Yeah. That's not, um, no, that wasn't Tim Roth. I was going to say Mindhunter. Did you say that? No. Really good. It's on Netflix. It's about um, the sort of uh, um, like mental profiling oh, yeah, of, yeah. Uh, of like sort of mass murderers in the 70s yeah. in America. Really good. Oh, and like cool. kind of the, the main character sort of goes through his own uh, struggles and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like gets too deep into it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. Like they okay. feature some real murderers and some like some oh, made wow. up ones and not like not actual like they actors portraying real murderers. Right, yeah, Many yeah, of them yeah. are dead, but uh, <laughs> thank God. Um, mm. Yeah. What time is it? It's half past. Yeah. It's probably yeah. My yeah. friend's probably going to shout anytime soon. Start wrapping it up. Um, what were the, the you you a biscuit dunker in tea? No, you because no. yeah, because when I sort of since I stopped with the milky breakfast tea type thing, yeah, I don't. I now I'm more of a herbal tea guy. Yeah, I tend to not really. You can't really dip a biscuit in a herbal tea. That's madness. That's yeah, unless it's like a herbal biscuit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's I've not, I've not got to that level yeah. yet. Of uh, I saw because of because uh, of this podcast, I, I've got an Instagram account and I started getting followed by um, some weird tea companies like in yeah, America yeah. and stuff. And like, there's one of them. They essentially make biscuits of tea, yeah. but then they snap it off and like chuck it. So it's like loose leaf tea, but in a solid oh, thing. But then yeah. they were making some biscuits out of that as well. I think, and it's have you are weird you, are you going to be looking into blue space teas? Yes, I am, yeah. Because I've got to say, that's where I am a big fan of, like, a sort of, yeah. you know, I've got a nice little teapot. I've got some lovely teas. Have you? Here. I shall actually, I'll tell you. This is one I can recommend. Yeah. Um, the company um, are called, uh, they're called the Skinny Tea Company. Um, they've got some amazing teas. Yeah? Like, yeah, they're loose. There's loads. T2. You know, they're mine. I've heard about The them, Australian yeah. brand. Yeah. But they sort of, there's quite a few branches around them. Now, they do some amazing ones. Yeah. I've got a really good um, oolong tea. Mm. Like, I don't know what that is. It's another, it's another one of the Chinese teas. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard of it, but yeah. it's one it's of those. It's nice. Uh, but yeah, I like the sort of, I do like a loose leaf tea. Yeah. You feel sort of, I like the preparation of it. Yeah. It's like coffee. I sort of, I, I love coffee as well. Yeah. But like proper. I, Proper coffee, and I, I also have recently moved into just black coffee. I don't have any oh, yeah. milk. I just and I, I've got like my wife bought me a V60 dripper for Christmas, which is like sort of it's like filter to the coffee, but you're yeah. making it in a little pot. You've got a little a sort of cone right. dripper in the top, and you use a, a paper filter, yeah, which you have to you have to wet with hot water, and then you grind your coffee to a certain coarseness. And it's all about getting the most flavour out of your coffee. Yeah, it sounds it's, incredible, but time consuming. It is time consuming, but that's what I love. I yeah. love that thing of preparing. I can see there's sort of a, you know, there's a meditation to it. I, yeah, like in yeah. the morning, I get up, you know, I'll sort of start the day. And then once I'm ready to start, I'll then make my coffee. Yeah. And it, 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 you know, it's a little, it's a 10 minute part of the day where I just have to stop everything yeah. and just it takes me I don't have to think about anything I just sit there and prepare my coffee and I that love it good. yeah it's really I find it very calming yeah and then I'll get sometimes I nip out into the garden and I'll sit there and just drink the coffee yeah and like, I find that with making loose leaf tea you know you're just picking it and you're preparing it and you're yeah it's nice nice there's an art to it yeah I've, I've only ever had like a few loose leaf teas but the first time I tried it I, I was um I was just doing the gig in Canterbury yeah yeah chocolate restaurant or something okay. and uh and i said oh can i have a tea and they just bought me it was like a little just a normal tea bag yeah but it had a little opening at the top so it was a loose leaf tea uh, bag yeah, yeah. It was incredible yeah it's so nice that is good actually it's like you can buy them little sort of they almost look like uh, metal balls yeah you put them in there and then you just dip that in the well tea. um uh graham wilkes uh our mutual friend yeah yeah, yeah. uh he, he sent me a picture the other day. He goes, oh, I've, got, I've got a present for you. Yeah. And uh, I don't know whether it's actually a present for me or not, but I'm, <laughs> I'm gigging for him in a couple of weeks. So I'll yeah. find out. <laughs> I'll make it all. Where's, where's that gift? Um, it's a little uh, it's a little pug. Oh, it's yeah, a tea yeah, infuser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sort of hangs over the edge of the cup. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I want that. That's good. I love it. I've got, I've got a nice sort of ceramic teapot. Nice. Got, no, I've got nice. Um, I've got, so I, I have to have different cups for different 
okay. hot drinks as well. Like this is this cup we're drinking from. These just grey ones. Yeah. These I think are really good for just a tea, a bar tea with a bag. Yeah. If I'm having loose leaf, often I'll drink it out of a little. I've got some Turkish glasses. Oh, okay. That are sort of. Oh, I, can I picked see that. up when I was in this. Uh, was it in Istanbul? Or two? No, they might be. I've got some other ones that are Moroccan as well. I got them in uh, Marrakesh. Nice. So they, I think they're lovely for a sort of mint tea, yeah. fresh mint. Mm. Then I've got I've got a ceramic Japanese uh, cup that I use whenever I drink my coffee. I've got it's really I'm very particular about my yeah. my. I take it very seriously. Yeah, sounds good, man. What's the trick? Well, see, I, like I'm I'm so, I'm not well versed yet in teas, but I just. I really like tea, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I like interest in tea. So this uh, podcast should be you exploring the world, absolutely. That's exactly more it. about them. But as I'm you not. Go. I'm not much of a coffee guy. So well, right. in the, I don't like coffee. Right. Um, <laughs> pretty much rules it out. Yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah. And, but I, lo- I do love tea. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just had the idea to start this. Yeah, I don't understand the split. And... Some people definitely have that split of yeah. one or the other. I, th- I sort of. Yeah. I don't know what it is either. Yeah. I, th- I think I love both. You know, yeah. I'm a. I've probably only have had bad coffee to be fair yeah, I think that's a, a part of the thing I do think people have quite bad standards for coffee in yeah. this country my, my wife's from Melbourne and Melbourne oh, okay. is the coffee capital of sort of the modern world like in terms of like yeah you know there's obviously if you go to like you get some like Ethiopian coffee where it's like a tiny cup of mud <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah, yeah. strong it's delicious oh, really? but it's brutal like yeah. it's so strong so there's that you know but then I think in this country we've got a bad history of coffee it's just people drinking instant or going to Starbucks or, you know, people at places that don't do it right. Whereas yeah. if in Melbourne, I sort of go from going over there for years, just they make coffee so well. They take such a sort of, they take the time over it. Yeah, it's, it's an art. It is, there is an art to it. And I think that's what got me into it. And it's starting to spread around the UK now. Yeah. Like, I think London's got some wicked coffee shops now. Yeah, yeah. Other cities as well, like you can you can finally get good, really good coffee, nice. and I think it's I think people will get on board with it more of drinking it properly rather than just going to a Costa and getting a moody latte. Yeah, it's yeah. massive and it's basically in hot milkshake. Yeah, you don't want that. No. I, yeah, I, I, I was at a, uh, a services once and we got a tea from a Costa, yeah, and yeah, the girl yeah. just looked at me. She made eye contact while she was pouring the milk out, and I thought that's a dangerous move, yeah, and it was. Is, and she just on. poured. It was it was more milk come than tea. On. And then I was livid, but uh, my girlfriend was just sort of ushering me out the door, yeah, just like, just leave it. And it's, just like, it's just milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> unacceptable. Milk, milk with a horrible bag <laughs> in it. Yeah, so that was, uh, it was, it was unpleasant. It cost about four pounds. Yeah, I know, it's mad. Mm. But this is the way to go. Start a podcast, get, fr- get some free tea. Exactly. Get yeah. Learn about teas on air. Yeah. Uh, so have you got anything that you want to plug? This will probably be coming out in the next sort of, couple of weeks hopefully because um, i want to bring it out before i've got a show that um oh, what, 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 what's we're doing plug uh i'm doing a preview at the bill murray oh, in, lovely. Uh, in islington on the 26th but it's an early one so it's 5 30 or 5 i think yeah it's 5 30 yeah so, uh, so come off you finish work guys um, um i'm just i'm off to australia in a week oh, of course, yeah, 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 so yeah, i'm there it. for i'm there right through doing sydney melbourne comedy festival yeah and I'm there till the end of April, back here, and then I'm gearing up for the Edinburgh Fringe. No. Yeah. Do you have a venue confirmed yet? I've, uh, I have. It's not nothing's on sale yet, right. so I can't really. I don't think I'm allowed to say yet until it's sort of. You can't really risk yeah. it, can you? But yeah, I've got my time slot. I've got my venue. Just working on. I've already started to write the show, even though I haven't actually settled on a title yet. Yeah. But I've got a couple of weeks to get the title down. Or well, I think I've got. Oh my god! Yeah, so, so, yeah. very soon. Yeah. This will be going out around the time. So yeah, I'll be. I've got a few titles in my head, but I haven't decided. Yeah. I've got the title and the show, but yeah, I don't lovely. have a venue. So oh right, okay, that's. <laughs> it's, uh, I've got the opposite problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm hoping something comes in. But I can only. Uh, cause I started a started a new job to help pay for Edinburgh, and can only get two weeks off of work uh, to go to Edinburgh. So uh, struggling to get. Yeah. Room, but something will come up. Definitely, always there's always stuff. If I mean, weirdly, nowadays as well with the free fringe and free festivals, stuff things come up right up until the time. Like, yes. if there is that thing of I suppose there's that old school thing of wanting to be in the brochure. Yeah, but if you actually take that out of the equation, some rooms are going. I remember last year, like people like Bob Slayer and that sending out things that people had dropped out in July. Oh, really? So there's always there's always room. So yeah. I'd say, yeah, there will be there will be room. Nice. Well, yeah, fingers crossed. Well, yeah, I mean, when it's out, look out for my show, guys. This is uh, called Size Matters. So, Sci apostrophe S matters, uh, which is, you're right, that is amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, when I thought of it, I. I, I ah, 
Oh, your friend's here. Oh, that is. Right. That's all right. Right, cool. Yeah, Should I was wrap it up. I was happy. Yeah, go on, let's, let's do it. it. Right, Cheers so uh, it, thanks, no, thanks, thanks, thanks for having me at your lovely flat, man. No it's worries. great. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on the podcast. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll see you all next week or whenever the next one comes Cheers. out. Cheers. Bye.